Okay, so in this video, we will be talking about capacitors connected in series. So now there's one battery here and then this is connected with three capacitors in series. You know that charge on C1 is equal to charge on C2, which is also equal to charge on C3. How do you know? Because first, the free electrons from the negative terminal of the battery. Okay, this is the negative terminal of battery. This is the positive terminal of the battery. The free electrons will flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the plate A of the capacitor C3. So that the plate A of capacitor C3 will have a charge of negative Q. And then the negative Q on plate A will induce another charge on the plate B. So that plate B can now have a charge of positive Q. When the capacitor C3 has a positive charge on the plate B, the electrons are repelled from plate B to plate D of capacitor C2. And now the plate D of capacitor C2 will have a negative charge, which is negative Q. And then this negative charge will also induce a positive charge, which is positive Q on plate F. So now you know that The amount of charge is the same in all the capacitors in a series. So come back to here. Now you know that the charge on C1 is equal to charge on C2, which is equal to charge on C3. And then we denote the charge as Q. So remember Kirchhoff's second law, okay? Kirchhoff's second law states that the sum of all the potential change inside a closed loop of a circuit is equal to zero. Okay, so the Kirchhoff's second law states that inside this closed loop, the summation of all the potential change is equal to zero. So you know that V minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 is equal to zero. Okay. V1 is the potential difference across capacitor C1. V2 is the potential difference across capacitor C2. And then V3 is the potential difference across capacitor C3. Okay, V1 is equal to Q over C1. V2 is equal to Q over C2. V3 is equal to Q over C3. And then V divided by Q is equal to 1 over C where the C is the total capacitance, or you can say the equivalent capacitance of the whole circuit. So now you know that 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 for the capacitors in series. For example, please find the total capacitance of the following circuit. You know that C1, C2 and C3 are connected in a series. And therefore, you can use this formula to find the resultant capacitance. Please determine the total amount of charge that flows inside the circuit. Okay, so in the circuit, you have two capacitors connected in series. And then you use the formula 1 over C is equal to 1 over C A plus 1 over C B. Okay, then you know the equivalent capacitance of the circuit. So by using Q equal to C V, you can find the charge on capacitor A, which is also the charge on capacitor B. Alright, so now you know that Q A is equal to Q B. And then please determine the potential difference across the 300 microfarad capacitor. The potential difference across this capacitor is VB. And then VB equal to QB over CB. QB is equal to Q, which is also equal to QA. Okay. 
And then by using this formula, you know the potential difference across the capacitor B. And then please determine the potential difference across the 200 microfarad capacitor. By using the same formula, then you can get the potential difference across the capacitor A. And then you check that the potential difference across capacitor A plus the potential difference across capacitor B will be equal to the EMF of the battery. Okay? So now you realize that the higher the capacitance, the lower the potential difference across the capacitor in a series. The lower the capacitance, the higher the potential difference across that capacitor in a series circuit. Another question. Capacitors C1 and C2 are connected in series with a battery. Please determine the charge stored in each capacitor. So now you know that the capacitors are connected in series and then you find the equivalent capacitance first and then by using Q equal to CV, you can find the charge of C1 which is also the charge of C2. Please determine the total energy stored in the capacitors. That means that the total energy stored inside two capacitors. Okay, how do you get this formula? Actually, Okay, it actually comes from this. That means that the energy of capacitor 1 plus the energy of capacitor 2 is equal to this formula. Where 1 over C equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 because you know that they are connected in a series circuit. Okay, so the total energy store in is this. Please calculate the energy supplied by the battery. Energy supplied by the battery is equal to QV. Okay which is the charge on capacitor 1, which is also the same as the charge on capacitor 2, times the potential difference. And then please comment your answer in 2 and 3. You realize that this amount is twice of this amount. So the total energy stored inside the capacitors is equal to half of the energy supplied by the battery because another half of the energy supplied by the battery is lost as heat and dissipated in resistances okay, during the charging of the capacitors. 3 capacitors C1, C2 and C3 are connected in a series circuit. Which statement about the circuit is true? The first step that you do is to find the equivalent capacitance first. You know that the capacitors are connected in series, so you use this formula and then you can find the equivalent capacitance, which is this value. So this is wrong. And then you know that when the capacitors are connected in series, the charge on the C1 is equal to charge on C2, which is equal to charge on C3. Okay, so the charge in capacitor C3 is the same as the charge in C2, which is also the same as charge in C1. Okay, so when the C1 is the smallest, then V1 should be the largest. So you know that the potential difference across C1 is the biggest. Now you know that the formula for the energy is like this. Actually, you have the formula that E equal to Q square over 2C, which is equal to half CV square, which is also equal to half QV. But then I use this formula because I know that the Q is a constant for all the capacitors. So I know that the larger the C, the smaller the E. So when C1 is less than C2, which is also less than C3, I know that E1 is larger than E2, which is also larger than E3, okay? So this one is wrong because E2 is larger than 
E3. The energy stored inside the capacitor C3 is smaller than that of capacitor C2. Two identical air gap parallel plate capacitors A and B each has a capacitance of 20 microfarad. A material with dielectric constant of 3.55 is inserted into the air gate of capacitor B. The two capacitors are then connected in series to a battery of 12 volt. Please determine the effective capacitance of the circuit. Okay, you know that for the air gate capacitor, the capacitance is 20 microfarad. And then when the dielectric is inserted, then the capacitance become 71. And then you know that the two capacitors are connected in series, so you use this formula to get the equivalent capacitance. Please determine the energy stored in each capacitor in the circuit. The charge on capacitor A is equal to charge on capacitor B, okay, which is equal to this. And then the energy stored inside the capacitor A is equal to Q squared over 2 Ca, where the Ca is the capacitance of capacitor A. And then you use the same formula for capacitor B. Okay, in the next video, we will be talking about the capacitors connected in parallel. Thank you.